What if I told you that the medication sitting in your medicine cabinet right now, the one your doctor prescribed to keep you healthy, could actually be sabotaging your sex life? And you probably have no idea it's happening. I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're talking about five incredibly common medications that new research shows might be causing erectile dysfunction in millions of men. But here's the shocking part. Number three on our list is something that over 100 million Americans take every every day. So in this video, we're going to talk about why medications cause erectile dysfunction and give you a game plan for what to do if you're taking these meds, because you shouldn't have to choose between being healthy and your sex life. Now, before I dive into the list of medications, what I want you to realize is that erections come through a complex process. They require good blood flow good hormones and healthy nerves. And all of these things can be disrupted in a variety of ways. Now, what happens during a normal erection is you see something, hear something, feel something that makes you turned on, and your brain sends signals that cause your blood vessels in your penis to relax, allowing blood to rush in, get trapped, and voila, you have an erection. But here's where medications can cause problems. Most of the drugs can interfere with this process in three different ways. One is they can affect your cardiovascular system by reducing blood flow to the penis. Think of it as trying to fill a balloon through a kinked garden hose. It's not going to work well. Second, some of the medications mess with your nervous system. So those signals between your brain and penis get disrupted. And third, some drugs can alter your hormones like testosterone, which is really important for sexual desire. And if you're not desiring sex, it's going to be much more difficult to get an erection. And most of you watching this are probably already on a prescription medication. It's estimated that 60% of men have taken at least one prescription medication in the last 30 days in the United States, and 20% or one in five take five prescription medications. So let's get to this study. Now, this study took data from the NHANES database of 3,000 men who were taking prescription medications and found that they were 80% more likely to experience erectile dysfunction compared to men not on any medications. Even after they adjusted for factors like education, BMI, other health conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, and smoking, these still remain true. Now, they didn't just find correlation. They used an advanced genetic analysis technique called Mendelian randomization analysis analysis, which essentially strengthens that correlation to be closer to causation. So these medications aren't just associated with ED, they might even be causing it. So let's count down the five biggest culprits. And I guarantee that at least one of these is going to surprise you. Number five is atenolol. Now, I've talked about beta blockers like atenolol before in a video about high blood pressure medications, so you can learn more about it there. But beta blockers are incredibly effective at lowering blood pressure and protecting your heart. But here's the problem. Atenolol works by slowing down your body's sympathetic nervous system, which lowers your blood pressure and heart rate. But here's the problem. The same process can make it harder for your blood vessels in the penis to relax and open up. And since you need good blood flow to get an erection, this medication essentially interferes with that process. Now, the irony with all these medications is you're usually taking them to improve some part of your cardiovascular health or your health overall, which is also causing problems with erections. But the reality is that about 25% of men on beta blockers have experienced some degree of erectile dysfunction. Number four surprised even me, simvastatin or a cholesterol-lowering statin. Now, statins are among the most prescribed medications in the world. If you're new here, you should know that cholesterol is one of the common causes of erectile dysfunction. Now, these medications are very effective at preventing heart attacks and strokes, but they can interfere with testosterone production theoretically. Here's why. Cholesterol is actually a building block for testosterone. So when you dramatically lower cholesterol, you can inadvertently reduce testosterone, which can ultimately lead to lower libido and erectile problems. Now, this is pretty rare and usually only seen at the highest doses. So if you're worried, get your testosterone checked rather than stopping your statin. Number three, aspirin. Yes, aspirin. This one shocked me too. We're talking about regular over-the-counter aspirin that millions of people take every day. Now, the research shows that chronic aspirin use might cause ED, possibly because it affects nitric oxide, which again is the ignition for erections. Now, don't panic if you're on daily aspirin. Oftentimes, the benefit of 
aspirin is far more beneficial than the risk. But again, talk about it with your doctor. Don't just stop the medication. Number two is another statin, a torvastatin, which does the same thing. It reduces cholesterol production and ultimately can affect testosterone production. But again, managing your cholesterol, your heart disease, and your high blood pressure are so important to also help optimize your erectile function. So number one, is metformin. Now, metformin is a go-to medication for type 2 diabetes. Now, this is tricky because, again, diabetes is a major cause of erectile dysfunction. In fact, guys with diabetes, almost 50% have erectile dysfunction. But the research suggests that metformin may have additional risk because it affects vitamin B12 absorption, which can affect how well your nerves function, which is really important for sexual response, and it may affect testosterone. Now again, before you rush to your medicine cabinet and throw everything away, take a deep breath. This would be very dangerous and potentially life-threatening. So here's what you need to know. The conditions that these medications treat, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, are far more dangerous to your overall health and sexual function than the medication themselves. When you have uncontrolled diabetes, you will get permanent nerve damage leading to irreversible ED. Untreated high blood pressure can lead to strokes and high cholesterol can lead to heart attacks. These medications are literally saving your life. But here's what you can do. First, talk to your doctor, be honest about your sexual side effects, and there are tons of alternatives. So there are many medications that might work just as well with fewer sexual side effects. For example, you could take ACE inhibitors instead of beta blockers or a different statin formulation for high cholesterol. Second, and probably more important, is optimize your lifestyle. Making sure you're doing regular exercise, having a healthy diet, getting good sleep, and managing your stress. I can't tell you how much this is a part of everything, managing your stress. Everyone lives in a highly stressful environment these days, but working on that can be super helpful. And all of these things will improve sexual function and hopefully get you off medications altogether. Third, if there is no alternative, you can consider switching the timing of your medications or maybe reducing the dose after talking to your doctor. And lastly, don't ignore the problem. If you are having sexual side effects, this is really important. Erectile dysfunction is a canary in the coal mine, meaning that very often it presents long before you have a heart attack, and many people who have erectile dysfunction will go on to have issues with their heart health moving forward. And so recognizing it, talking to your doctor about it, getting evaluated is a step to going in the right direction. I will tell you guys that most of my patients who have erectile dysfunction are so motivated to be better, and this is an opportunity for you to turn your life around. So I hope that you do, and as always, remember to take care of yourself because you are worth it.